at the Victoria Concert Hall. One of Singapore's most prominent landmarks, Singapore's Big Ben, the clock tower of the Victoria Theatre and Victoria Concert Hall. The position of the theatre and concert hall in the midst of the government offices can be explained. The Victoria Theatre, which is older than the concert hall, was built as a town hall. Victoria Theatre, the old town hall, was designed, as with most buildings in Singapore of that time, by a civil and mechanical engineer, John Bennett, in the neoclassical style very popular then. The town hall served as a place for public meetings, dances and other social functions, even amateur theatre. This caused problems as desks and chairs had to be moved for stage performances. The municipal council bowed out. So when the idea for a proper theatre came in, in 1901, it was proposed to convert the town hall into a theatre and a memorial hall be built to mark the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria. So the Victoria Memorial Hall was built in 1902. The architects, none other than Swan and McLaren, responsible for so many other historical landmarks here. The Victoria Memorial Hall for many years, the venue for musical recitals, orchestral and choral concerts was in disrepair by the 70s. But it was given a new lease of life when the hall was reopened as the Victoria Concert Hall in 1980. Today, the elegant concert hall is the home of our very own symphony orchestra, the stage thread by many talented musicians from all over the world. And while the concert hall is a stage for musicians, the Victoria Theatre is where the dancers and thespians take the limelight. On this theatre stage, the Watford Palace Theatre and the American Repertory Company have played. The Washington Ballet danced. But it's also the stage for local amateur talent. The Stage Club held their bigger productions at the Victoria Theatre, like My Fair Lady in 75. More recent productions include Oklahoma, presented by the American Association of Singapore. Pantomimes, the delight of all children, where else but here at the Vic. What stamps the Victoria Theatre as one of the major performing arts centres in Singapore are not only the frequency with which performances are held here, the Theatre Booking Office is also the central booking office for cultural performances held at the different theatres and auditoriums here. The Victoria Theatre and the Victoria Concert Hall, with a statue of the founder of Singapore, Sir Stamford Raffles in front, overlooking the bustling waterfront, the hub of cultural activities in Singapore, a fitting cultural landmark. Many talented people from all over the world have appeared on the Victoria Theatre and Victoria Concert Hall stages. Among them, concert pianists To Chi Hung and Dennis Lee. They performed at the Victoria Concert Hall not a few times since it was opened. Both of them are residing in London presently. They talked to Artivity about their work as concert pianists during their last visit to Singapore recently. Well, for me, it came. I suppose naturally um, there wasn't much angst about having to choose, although there was a very wide choice when I finished my old levels. But um, I went to London and from there it was a sort of natural flow of events that led me to just choose the piano and then make it a, a career. Well with me I had always done music at home because my family is quite musical. Then when I was 14, there came a scholarship from the Royal Schools in London, so that was a little bit of a push. And as with Chi Hang, things just developed. But of course, you know, we 
we had other thoughts as well, and we would like also to think that in life eventually we we will also be able to do other things. We don't want to go to our graves knowing only how to play the piano. <laughs> How did the pianists come to know each other? Um, well, how we met, it's, been, it's, it's long ago when we were both students. I uh, was interested in leader and um, played the piano part for his flatmate. And of course, you know, uh, the work that we did with Siu Tuan uh, brought us together. Uh, and uh, having had the same teacher in Milan, uh, I suppose, uh, helped things along, huh? Yes, yes. And you know when your fellow students in London, in a big city, especially when you come from the same part of the world, whether it's for music or not, sometimes you still meet, you know, because mm -hmm. we would get together for Chinese food oh, and that yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> she was a good cook too. Yeah. <laughs> Having met each other and know each other, what led to their collaboration as a duet? Why combine as a duet at all when each could have simply gone their separate ways as soloists? Well, because there's such interesting repertoire uh, for four hands and two pianos, and I thought it would be a waste not to be able to perform this too. We get such pleasure out of playing it together. Uh, and it's as great a challenge as playing solo music. Oh, in the, fact, in many aspects, yes. it's even much more difficult. And um, we, we, we find it a challenge. We don't want only to be able to play solo music. It's discipline. Mm. It's a test also to be able to yes. fit in with singers or violinists or cellists. And there's so much good music for varying combinations. It teaches you to listen. To listen, to, much to more. balance with others. To, to change your sound when necessary yeah. and to feel how others breathe and think. That is a great test. Pianists have chosen London as their base. They give their reasons for staying abroad in London and the West. Well, first of all, we are going into the field of Western art. So I think you should be quite familiar with the soil from which it sprang. And also, with all due respect, this is still a smallish and limited market. So we don't get the cultural climate, or not enough of it, though of course the fact that there's the orchestra here is already a very positive thing. We have to be constantly stimulated and challenged by listening, not only to others, but to lots of others. And this is why London or New York is, is a very exciting place to be in. If we so choose, we can listen to ten pianists a night. And this is what will keep us on our toes. And it's you. not a case of being selfish. It's a case of self-improvement. London, anyway, is a base. It's just a base. And we seem to get around. And I see my family a lot, too. And, yeah. and now passes. with aeroplanes, it's so easy to come yeah. back. In fact, we come back sometimes two or three times a year. 
And being based in London doesn't mean that we forget our Eastern roots. Not at all. I find that, you know, having been away so long, I've become even more Chinese because a lot of my European friends are interested and ask interesting questions and you feel that you have to really be much more aware of your heritage. Of Definitely. course, when we grew up here, you know, in Penang um, and in Singapore, we yeah. took for granted a lot of things and we were not appreciative enough. Yes, and now they are in good perspective. Yeah. And seeing things from a different angle, you, you learn something, I think. Having combined so well together, will they continue to play together as a duet? As long as there are opportunities to perform, uh, we will do so. But we don't want to be branded as just duetists, because originally we were soloists in our own right too. And we don't want people to think that one thing is inferior or superior to another. Music is music and one should be happy playing it. The main thing is to play it well. It doesn't really matter what kind of thing you play. And um, we hope by doing duo work, we can enrich our own solo work. A beautiful combination, Dennis Lee and Tu Chi Hung with Lida Ronette or Empress of the Pagoda composed by Ravel. And now we move on into the country with this cheerful flute duet by Te Sun Huat and Teo Chap Chai. <laughs>
On Country Roads, bringing our program to an end. On that happy note, I'll bid you farewell. See you again next week. Till then, this is Lena Zhou saying all the best. Mm -hmm.